Hello everyone, welcome back to Data Bracket. In this demo, we are going to see how to perform an ETL using AWS Glue. So basically, we are going to query S3 data from AWS and we will perform some ETL operations. These ETL operations are basic, filter out some uh, columns, we'll select and we'll drop few uh, columns and we'll rename the columns as well. Since this is a uh, first part of the series that we are going to witness, I'm going to keep this simple so that everyone can understand how to use AWS Glue. And after that, we are going to load the data back into S3 bucket. The transform data will be written back to AWS S3. So this is a simple ETL job. Let's see how we can achieve this. Let's get into the implementation now. All right, here we are in AWS console. So first thing we are going to see is how our data, where our data is residing and we'll see and create an ETL job on AWS Glue. And I'll show what permissions are required for the glue job to access the S3 bucket. So we would require a role initially. So the role, if you guys are creating it for the first time, you can go to the create role section. It should be an AWS service because we are going to give this AWS service access to another AWS service, which is glue is going to access S3 bucket, right? So let's give it as S3. Sorry, glue glue is trying to access other resources right so we'll select the glue service and we are going to add the policies we want s3 access so i'm going to give s3 full access initially but in the upcoming sections we will create a custom iam role using only specified policy definitions so let's uh, select s3 full access and we need glue access as well which is glue service role so in order to write the data back to the bucket we need this uh, access there are few accesses in this uh, policy that we need in order to write the data back so i'm going to use this glue service role as well and i'm going to click next and i'm going to call this role glue to s3 and uh, this allows this allows glue to call AWS services on our behalf. You can rename this description, but I'm gonna leave it as is. And uh, adding tags is uh, optional. If you guys are having any cost optimization or cost logging systems in place, tags will help you in that. But this is a straightforward use case, so I'm not gonna add any tags. And I'm gonna create the role. And our role is created. Glow S3. Uh, glow to S3, right? Yeah. So we have both uh, policy definitions here. Now let's go to S3 and uh, here in the bucket I have sample data which is in parquet format. So in this I don't have any data so this is where we will write the data back. And this is our source so this is a parquet file which have only two rows with no schema. right? So we will load this data into AWS Glue, we will rename the columns and we will do some uh, filtering on top of this columns and we'll drop few columns and we'll write the data back to S3 again to this glue transform sample. So let's see how to do that. So I'm gonna go to AWS Glue now and I'm going to go to Visual ETL and let's create a new Visual ETL role. So this is how glue UI looks like. So it's a canvas which have infinite scale. You can uh, minimize or maximize depending on how many stages you have. So here to the left, you see the plus icon where you can add nodes to the glue, dash, glue or canvas. So we have source nodes, transform node, target nodes, right? This popular is like mostly used nodes. That is again optional. So source nodes is where we are trying to read the data from S3. So I'm going to read, you select this AWS S, Amazon S3 node. If you have other data sources, you can select it from the list or you can create your own connection. That again, we'll see in the playlist as we progress. So I'm going to select Amazon S3. And once you select it, if you click on it, you will get the canvas uh, options to select the bucket where your data is residing. So you can name your uh, node if you want. I'm gonna leave it as Amazon S3 or I'm going to name it as S3 source and we are going to read the data from S3 location and we are going to add the S3 bucket here. 
so we can browse the s3 bucket we can go to the location where our data is and this is our parquet file i'm gonna select that and we have that and we have to choose the data format which is nothing but parquet so i'm going to select parquet we have other data formats uh, we don't have much options here but uh, this is what we get with glue and mostly the glue is again a uh, different way of showcasing spark functionality so if we go to uh, job details right we can see that this is again based on spark so if we see this is a spark type etl job and we have the python language and it have uh, worker type of aws instant ec2 instance and other specifications and some advanced properties which we will go in depth in other upcoming videos so i'm going to name this job s3 to s3 etl for the lack of a better name and it has not saved okay let's not get there now uh, we can save it as we progress and we have to choose the iam role let's choose the role that we created just now which was glue to s3 and we can save this for now and the job has been saved with the name and the permission other options are uh, default so i'm not touching any other options but we can uh, configure them and we'll see how to do that also so we have this right so in order to see the data you can move the canvas as i said and you can minimize maximize but yeah in order to see this source data all we have to do is click on the node and we'll have this uh, option from the below which will give us data preview so it will show how the data looks from this s3 bucket uh, let's give it a while it is loading right now because it has to spin up an instance and uh, present the data to us it shouldn't take long but i'm gonna pause here and then come back once the data is loaded all right so our data is loaded our data doesn't have any header we can see these are uh, randomly generated column names i have selected this data set for specific reason because we want to rename the column and schema if the schema doesn't exist and column names doesn't exist i want to show how to do that uh, let's see how to rename the columns first if we go to the node section again we have something called change schema node here in the transform section if we select that the s3 bucket source will be chained to the schema option if you don't see that usually it will look like this if you want to connect those two you can either drag and connect it manually on the ui or you can either select it from the node section you'll have other options once you add more nodes to it since we have only one s3 source so i'm going to select that and it will be chained to that so we got the schema here so this is how the schema is right now which have decimal type string type mostly string double and decimal right so we have column this is a source column name this is a target column name we can rename this to whatever we want so i'm going to name this column one and let's leave the data type as is and let's name this column two and let's name this column three and this can be name this can be address this can be zip code uh, depending on uh, what the schema you want to present you can rename the columns and if you don't want specific columns you can drop them directly by just checking this drop box so let's drop uh, let's keep this column mm, test and test one let's name this test one for the lack of a better name and cast the data type to integer and let's drop other columns so we have dropped around six columns we have changed the data type for one column and renamed our column names of other columns right so the data preview will show us how the column data looks like now so it's 50 percent complete it should show us the data now yeah so we can see now the column names are changed and we have only the columns that we have selected the drop columns are not in this stage at the moment so whatever we do after this stage we'll have only these columns as source and the data types are these right so we have the data now let's perform some simple 
of filtering so let's do a sql query here so let's go to the sql query and connect change schema as our uh, source node to the sql query yeah so we have this so we can rename this alias like change schema should be alias as a sql table you can keep it as my data source or something else so let's call it as s3 source and we are going to select everything from s3 source where so what was the column name our column 3 should be booking.com let's filter based on that where s3 source dot column 3 equal to booking.com right this is just simple filter using sql statement you can select the filter node there is a node called filter you can use this as well i'll show this in the other sections but for simplicity i'm using sql query here so this is the sql query and we have this selected now let's visualize the data so we have only one row now if you see here in the chain schema we had two rows let's expand this it starts okay here we have only one row where the column 3 is booking.com right so this makes sense so the transformation is working now, now let's say we want to select specific fields from this without dropping anything right so if we drop columns from this the other stages after this stage will not have access to the columns from this so let's select only specific fields from this uh, sql query right so we can search select fields and this should have parent node as sql query and we can select only the fields that we want without dropping anything right if we select one two three four five six we'll not have test one and address in the select field columns let the data get previewed and yeah we have column one zip code name there is no address and there is no test one column but it exists we have not dropped it so if any other nodes come in that nodes can access those columns only for this specific node we don't want those columns if the use case asks like demands us to remove those columns during the transformation and use some other arithmetic operations on the columns that we have and write it back we can use this select fields which helps us to select only specific fields without dropping any columns so this gives us a, a simple subset of the data from our source data so let's write this data back to the s3 bucket now so we can go to targets and select s3 and let's change the node as select fields because this is where we have selected the data and we want to write it as parquet format and compression should be for snap you can use gzip or lgo depending on your use case but i'm going to keep it as snappy and let's go to our s3 bucket and we don't have any data here so i'm gonna <coughs> go back i'm gonna select this folder and copy the s3 uri and i'm gonna simply paste it in our s3 bucket location here so this will give us the s3 bucket where we want to write the selected fields after transforming them uh, since this is a target write operation we can't preview anything but we can see output schema we'll have column one column two column three zip code name and test will not have any other columns so basically we took a parquet data frame with no columns and we added schema to that data frame and we did some transformation on top of that uh, data frame and we are writing it back to s3 so let's save this and we can now run this etl job and the run has started we can go to the runs uh, section here and we can see that the uh, job is running it will take a minute or two i'll come back once the job is completed and we should have an parquet file inside this s3 bucket so let's come back after the job run is completed all right so our job took one minute 42 seconds to complete and uh, we are going to optimize this as well the capacity dpus and other things 
but for now I have used the default setting and if we go to our S3 bucket and refresh this bucket we should see an object yeah we have the S3 object like parquet file that was written from the AWS group all right everyone so I think this uh, demo was useful so thanks for sticking around till the end I hope this was useful again uh, have a good day